Yo guys, it's Crack and Mickey. Guys, playing a game called Seduce Me, and today I'm seducing people. So, uh, let's go to options. Say window translation transition. I'll skip forward. If so, I've seen it after choice. Okay, voice acting. Oh, let me turn the volume back up for this. I can't. I can hear. So you guys can hear too. There we go. That thing. Tech speed. BGM. Okay. All right, then. I think we're good. Let's go. New game. This is a functional, interactive narrative. Any character resemblance to real life people are purely convicted. So I got the idea of this type of game from a guy called Lost Pause. He kind of like the reason why I do these games. Also, please know that the following game is for PG-16 audience. Please know that it's saying sexual, <laughs> violence, themes that approve trigger warnings, abuse, implied rape, and... Okay, please enjoy. Why, hello. Hi. Aren't you a gorgeous son? Oh, stop it. Can I be honored enough to know your name? Um, must know my name? Oh, God. Oh, oh. Um, my name is, uh... Kaz Chen. Kaz Senpai. Yeah. A lovely name. For a lovely person like you. You know it. Eric, do your job. Eric. Very well. This game was produced by Seraphim Entertainment under the direction of Michaela Lons and is powered by Renpai Visual Novel Engine. Whoever did this we game did a pretty good job, I think. This story. Eric. Fine, fine. <laughs> Fair. <laughs> Come on! Is that all you got? No, it's not! Let's right, me, asshole! I, I, I don't know that deep ass voice. What the fuck? Crap! Missed! Let's retreat for now! No kidding! Let's get out of here! That's right! You better run, you stupid punks! Stay out of our territory! Stay out! Call of fate or call of confidence. This is one moment. That one moment of violence started a chain of events I will never forget. This formula, created in the 70s, Miss Hipless. Hey there. Rain. It's been a long time since we got rain around here, but it's a season of rainy weather, so it's not exactly that surprising. Personally, I love the sound of it, the way the raindrops fell, like the soft tapping of fingers. It was soothing. Even looking at the droplets hit the glass window was extremely calming. For this reason, I felt lucky for having a seat next to the window. Though I did spend more time staring out the window than I did paying attention in class. Bitch, you gonna fail. <laughs> the lecture in class is pretty boring. Miss Phillips' voice was soprophic. Sur 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 look it up if you don't know what it means, guys. I'm just letting you know. I don't know what it means either, so I'm looking it up eventually. But I just went. But it was interesting in what she was saying. I'm <sighs> <sighs> And since it was the period right before every lunch, all I could think about was doing other things in my free time. Honestly, I didn't really care too much about economics. Oh, you got go girl, I got that class too. I had good grades in class. But it was only because I read the textbooks and did my assignments I as I had to. I was only taking the classes because it was mandatory. If I were up to me, I would probably have taken another course. Luckily, it was my senior year, so after the semester, it would be the end of high school courses forever. Thank God for that. I didn't hate high school. 
it was just kind of mundane how the days drifted on. Okay, this girl has a really good vocabulary. Like, it's beyond minds. The only thing I really enjoyed about going to school was me and my friends and hanging out with them. But that was kind of it. Okay, there's a lot of te typing, texting. Okay. She looks so damn fake. Mr. Sure the Brazier boys interrupted my train of thought. That's when I thought I was thinking about class. I quickly turned my head to face the teacher. Hopefully, she didn't pick me up just because she noticed that I was spacing out. Um, yes, ma'am? Oh, I think I read about that in the textbook last night. It should be... The black school's a model. Ma, look at my name, Ka Senpai. Very good as always, Miss Anderson. Ka Senpai Anderson, okay. Anderson, it followed me where, wherever I went. Most people didn't really know me yet by my first name, but rather my surname. No doubt, no, since the surname was a trademark of the international famous fillet. Philanthropy, philanthrop phil phil oh my god, I fuck, no, fuck it. Anderson Family Toys, and because the founder was my own grandfather. Damn, I'm looking fine. <laughs> to be one of my best friends, turn around to probably give me a punch on the shoulder. Kick ass, girl. Oh, thank you. <laughs> From besides me, I heard Naomi. Another one of my best friends clearing her throat in obvious disapproval so they chose the world. <sighs> Both of them the same. Miss Capini. Oi. Oi. <laughs> Fuck you, little slut asshole. Sasha her in a chair as Naomi gave her a small smirk. She always potted when Naomi showed, showed her up. That's the end of today's lecture. Thank you. Let's separate into groups and work on your projects. Remember, everything is due on Monday. Go ahead now. Before I knew it, Susie and Naomi were scooted in their desks to align with mine. And we turned into three month three musketeers. Whenever the teacher let the students decide on groups, we always grouped together. Damn, she's cute. Okay, okay. It was a sheer stroke of luck that I always managed in the same class. So we had to at least take the opportunity to stick together as much as we could. Besides, we're the most comfortable around each other than say compared to being around my other classmates. It just made sense for us to put our heads together for any kind of project. I took out the poster we were working on and rolled it out onto three desks. We pretty much finished the folding of the guidelines for the project through. We didn't have, oh my God. After working on the poster a bit more, we sat back and inspected our work. You see, I'm inspecting you right now, girl. Oh. Naomi and Julie was the first look at uh, for any issues. She slightly tapped pencil against her chin, staring intently at the project. So she's sure enough to look at the poster and stroke her chin. After a few seconds, her face brightened up as she spoke. How about a company name? Huh? Did we really skip over that? Yes, bitch. She have scratches on her neck? It always came down to me. Whenever there was something. I like Trinity Corporations. That is way too predictable. How about the dragon? What do dragons have to do with the what? It's a totally unpredictable name. It's hot. But our company sells bubblegum. 
Who said we can't produce spicy bubble gum? <sighs> what do you think? Oh, they didn't say my name. Oh my god, it's choosing time! Dun 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 No, no. I I I no fine. Be lame. Alright, now that we've decided on a name, now what? As we ended our name game in Google Scammer, I thought it was my bad, I blinked out. <laughs> Who is that? Ignore it. It's just reset. Look over my shoulder to see her laughing with her circle of friends. Mostly compressed to popular people. They were particularly particularly friends with everyone in the school. As a result, everyone in the school knew them. In the center of it all, I was Lisette White. It was Lisette White. She was the poster that indicated she was still working. but that she also was ready to casually chat about her day. She had an endearing balance of char char charismatic and awkward, which is apparently when she t first talked to someone. It was easy to make her smile and laugh, and she was quite the comedian as well. Basically, she was perfect. Not that she was like a robot or something, but she was, why well, she had to be a robot to be perfect. Robots can break. They're not perfect, girl. <laughs> You're perfect in every single way, Kai Senpai. Look at yourself. Look at yourself. Fucking amazing. She was a student that everyone else wanted to be. Lisette was bright, easygoing, and above all, had a future laid out right in front of her. Unlike the average student, she knew just what she wanted to do after high school. And as a result, she was confident and ambitious. Though sometimes it could be, it could rub out a lot of people the wrong way. Moreover, I had known her since I was very young, but it would ultimately result in rivalry that continued today. Of course, my friends knew that that, that way that my friends knew what was between us, and upon seeing my glance at her, they shifted their attention to her. Damn, she's fast as fuck. Imaginally, Susie was the first out of class, slinging her backpack over her shoulder with ease as she quickly strode out the door. Her seat isn't even closest to the exit, and she always manages to be the first one out of the door. I don't think I'll ever understand that. I wish I was as fast as her getting out of here. I have a feeling we're gonna break the friendship with Suzu. Very true. <laughs> Man, you guys are slow. Are you coming or what? We heard you the first time. Not everyone has rocket boosters attached to their legs when the bell rings. Are you kidding me? That class was ridiculously bad. Even Miss Valedictorian here was dozing off a bit. Uh -huh. I do have to admit, I was spacing out, and just because I answer one question doesn't mean I'm automatically the valedictorian. Okay, yes, you are. that wasn't too interesting. But you should at least pay attention when Phillips is talking about the important parts. So you finally admit it. We're finally on the same wavelength. Welcome to the club, Patterson. Please, don't call me by my last name. This isn't the classroom. And never in a million years will we ever see things eye to eye. <laughs> Normally anyone would think that opposite like them would never associate with each other, but even though they were so different, their friendship somehow made a lot of sense. 
Maybe they were just perfect compliments. Her personality just didn't dedicate the possibility of their friendship. After all, we three have been best friends since preschool. All right. You do like spicy food after all. Me into the cafeteria. A buzzing room filled with aromas kinds of food. As we got in line, we ordered our meals and chatted freely. Cajun fries and the spicy chicken burger for me. That's my definition. Damn, you're gonna be shitting out fire, girl. I'll take a tuna sandwich and some juice. You're probably going to need water or something to curb all that spicy flavor, Suzu. I can't be tamed by the likes of that. If it's spicy, then it's gotta be all or nothing. You're crazy. Yes, yeah, she is. She's fucking. Hell yeah, I'm crazy. Sexy as hell. I think I'm getting a migraine. I think I'll go with it. You said it. I I didn't want to agree with any of them. I don't want to break this friendship up. Okay. Oh, she's a lesbian. Aww, why not? What's so interesting about talking about guys? Not like any of us are gonna get boyfriends. But do you not see me? Do you not see these green eyes? We don't I'm sexy know as fuck. What if one of us does get a boyfriend? Like that's going to happen, Nancy. Look at us. I'm a tiny Italian. You're a ditzy blonde. <laughs> hey. <laughs> Or girlfriend. Or girlfriend? She can be a lesbian if she wants. Yeah, I can. True. Damn, the she just all out. Why not? It's our senior year. Might as well get a boyfriend. Maybe she's just not interested in a relationship, Suzu. <sighs> it really wasn't about a relationship. More of the people. <laughs> But more of there was no one interesting enough to be a relationship with. Don't get me wrong, I'm an open person, but there were not many interesting guys in the school to go out with. Who knows? Time will tell. Nobody looked up at me and wanted to continue the conversation. However, before she could speak, the speakers in the cafeteria started up, and an announcement echoed through the cafeteria. Oh shit. Oh, oh, oh god. Oh my, oh my, oh my. Looks like our plans have been cut short. The men in white coats have finally come to get you. <laughs> Suzu, don't joke around. What if it's serious? Ah, fine. If something happens, just call it. Okay. Funny enough, something did happen. And it was certainly no laughing matter. Cold? This is really good. Chuck my dick. Some out of dick. Rain became okay. Rain became heavier. Coming to you now. Then the skies had turned dark. Through I couldn't see any of it. I know the black umbrella. Now I was looking up. In fact, looking up at the exact opposite of what I wanted to do. I started the grass beneath me, unable to look up at people weeping around me. All I could see was damp grass underneath my feet. Only a monotone hello. Eulogies that floated through my ears reminded me that I was at a funeral. It was only when the speeches ended that I was able to raise my head. Arnold Anderson, forever. Oh! A small gathering of people, most hasty relatives that I didn't even know related to me, were held around a simple small grave. For a while, all I heard was the sound of raindrops and umbrellas. If it weren't raining, Everything will probably be in a, heavy, in a heavy silence. I looked beside me. Where's my father? Where my father was standing and holding up a large black umbrella for our small family of three. His face was emotionless. 
A strange sight next to me, weeping mother. Next strange sight next, next to my weeping mother. I wonder what was going through his mind. After all, attached to this moonly gray tombstone before us was his father's name. My grandfather, the one that raised me like his own daughter, had passed away that day. The ceremony was small. Only close family were allowed to come in. Slowly through, people began to leave, leaving my father, mother, and me behind the grave. A man dressed in clean black suits and a uniform, black umbrella of the funeral attendants, walked towards us, introduced himself as grandfather's lawyer. He brought a few documents from his suitcase and began to read it aloud. And now, shall read Harold Anderson's last will and testament. I'm going to save it real fast. And to my dearest granddaughter, I give my estate. All the furniture and decor that resides within the house shall also be given to my granddaughter. What? I couldn't believe my ears. I earned the family estate at 18? That was impossible. And yet it was written by my own grandfather's hand. He passed the family estate to her? Why am I not? Dear. Well, did he say anything about what will become of the CEO and chairman position of the Anderson Toys Company? No. It is presumed that the vice chairman will succeed the position. <laughs> Even to the bitter end, he wouldn't give in. What a stubborn old man. Shaking, my, shaking his head, my father returned to face my mother with a serious expression on his face. About the estate. Should we send her there to get used to the building? It'll be a good place for her to live after high school. Are you sure we should? Why not? This would be a good experience for her. Honey, what do you think? I really wasn't sure what to say. Why did my grandfather think I was the appropriate hire to the mansion? Was I even ready to live on my own? Well, that seems to be it. We'll be taking our leave now. I'm sure the little heiress needs some time to adjust. Harris. David. He's mad. You mad, bro? Are you mad? Even though she raised her voice, my dad worth wordlessly began to walk back to the car, disinterested. Don't mind him, honey. I think that your grandfather's passing really affected him. Why don't we get back home for now? You can go ahead to the car, Mom. I think I need some time alone with Grandpa. Oh, of course. Take all the time you need. She gave me a quick hug and hurry after my dad. I looked around the funeral ground, which was completely empty, save for the sullen look grave that was laying in front of me. I'm sure that if my Grandpa were in charge of arranging all of this, it would be much different. It was blatantly obvious that my dad, my dad was in charge of the whole event. Who else would bury their own family the same day they passed away? Everyone knew my grandfather's love for toys, and yet the grave was mere stone slab on the ground. Void of any children's toys, my dad didn't even bother putting flowers. His disdain was almost pitiful. Sorry, Grandpa. I tried to choke out some words, but the only thing that came out was a choke sob. You told me to stay strong, but right now, I'm farthest from it. Like that one time, a long time ago. Flashbacks. Grandpa! Oh, it's so good to see you again, sweetie. And one of my favorite things about seeing my grandfather the way he greeted me, unlike my father. My grandfather was loving and playful, even as I grew older. Sorry that dad couldn't be here today. He said that he wasn't feeling too good again. I I, I had always been like that. Dad missed every visit to my grandpa, grandpa's house, saying that he was busy with work or wasn't feeling well. Is that so? Well, that's okay. Daddy can come around next time. And you're here, right? 
Mm, yeah. So what are we doing today, Grandpa? Mommy says that why do you call her mommy? Aren't you like 18? Okay. Mommy says that there's a new dessert cafe open in town. Maybe we can go. Oh, I would love to. But I've been so busy with the company these days. We're actually working on a little something. Would you like to see? Oh, yeah, uh, yeah, yeah. Yes. Oh, is that a toy? It is. I was designing a new line of them, but I feel like something's missing. You don't think you could help me out, could you? Of course. Turn my hand with a smile. As I inspected it carefully, it was beautifully crafted. And obviously a lot of work is put into it. There is one thing though. So, what do you think? Hmm. I think the heart on his chest should light up when you hug it. It'll be like it's alive. And it can be a little night nightlight before you sleep. He shrugged his chin, considering my input was nodding his head. After a few moments of silence, deliberation, he turned to me. With a chuckle. That's a great idea. I'll get to changing it right away. You're always like my little lucky charm, dear. You always know what to add to make the perfect toy. Ah, uh, well. I hope I can be like you one day, Grandpa. You want to make toys as well? Hmm. Well, making people happy is the best feeling in the world. I don't know if I want to make toys when I grow up, though. Don't worry too much about it. You have plenty of time to decide. Besides, you should do what makes you happy as well. That makes sense. Daddy doesn't think of it the same way though. Your father. I'm sure he just wants the best for you. I'm not sure about that. Sweetie, look at me. <laughs> I'm looking into your eyes, Daddy. He bent down and looked at my eye level with a serious look in his face. As much as your father may say something that doesn't make sense now, you must remember that he's always thinking about you. He loves you. There's no doubt about that. And you need to love him just as equally. I don't hate Daddy. I really do love him. I don't know why he's like this. No. Your father and I have had some difficulties with each other in the past. But it's nothing that you should be concerned about. I had heard tributes of from my mother and various other people. Only people who had stayed quiet with where my father and grandfather both of them refrained from saying a word about on the subject matter. But it was clear that whatever happened set up a wall between them. It's hard though, time to pretend as if nothing were wrong. However, no matter what, you have to stay strong. You're a big girl already, and, well, there'll come a day when it seems like it's you against the world. But always remember that your family and friends will be here with you. Daddy, Mommy, your friends at school, me, we'll stand together to get through it. How can you be so sure of that? Because we'll be right here and here. Point to my heart. On my head, okay. First, then pointed to, and then pointed at my chest. So stay strong. Promise. For a moment, he looked at almost sad, pleading, but as quickly as it comes to expression, disappeared from my face, and he was all smiles once again. Promise. Upon hearing that, Grandpa bled out a great burst of laughter. Stood up. All right then. Enough of that. How about I whip up some special homemade dessert? I know it can't accompany you at that new cafe. Sure can talk and eat while I cook and do some paperwork. Homemade dessert? I race to the kitchen. That's how I am with my mom every day. Hey, slow down there. I'm not what I used to be. <laughs> oh, <laughs> you will me the very home I love to see you in. Why? Why would you think that I'd be ready to take it? Especially after this. A surge of anger bubbled within me, but as quickly but I quickly swallowed it. There was no use of getting mad, especially when the person in question was no longer there. I'm sorry. It's hard to stay calm when you left me with so many questions. Especially about what happened between you and Dad. Ha. What am I doing? Talking to a grave.
My vision blurred, and I suddenly realized that I was crying. My face heated up as tears rolled down my cheeks. I'll bring you some flowers later. I miss you, Grandpa. I'll try my best to fulfill my promise I gave to you, even though the world might turn against me. I have the grave, wiping my tears hastily so my parents wouldn't see. Well, it's time to head back home. I'll cook up your favorite lasagna when we get home, okay? Thanks, Mom. How would I speak the entire drive home? I wanted to talk to him, but after his moment at the funeral, it wasn't. I wasn't sure if it was a good idea. It's about time we took off those dreary black clothes. Gather my courage, I decided then that it was time to talk. That could I ask you something? Go ahead. Why do you want me to move into the state so soon? I thought I made that rather clear. The college near your grandfather's house is well known for its business program. You are planning to major in business, yes? Right after you graduate from high school, you'll just live there and can easily commute to and from school. It's a perfect fit for you. But it's so sudden. You decide so quickly right after the funeral. Uh, don't be so sensitive. If you're like that in the real world, you'll be crushed. I'm just saying that maybe we could talk a bit more about my future. And invite my father up his te his temples. I said quietly. After you graduate from college, you'll work at Anderson Family Toys. I have connections since I am part of the board of directors, so you will be guaranteed a spot. That is what we talked about before, yes? But what if... Stop mumbling! But what if I don't want to work there? Don't be silly. It's the family company. Our company. I'm not just going to hand it over to some incompetent vice chairman. He came closer to me and his face softened. Look, this is all for the best, okay? You may not know it right now, but you will appreciate it later. Oh shit. For some reason, when I heard him say that, something snapped at me. I wasn't exactly like sure what it was, but it made me feel so angry. Do you even care that grandfather passed away? Of course I do. Well, everything seems fine and dandy to you. Things couldn't be better. Excuse me? I don't like your tone, young lady. It's like nothing ever happened at all. Like you just ignored the fact that he's no longer here. Do not raise your voice at me. What did he do? To, what, what, what did he ever do to you to deserve this? Face hardened. Crossed his arms and interrupted again in angry laughter. Ha! You sure place him upon a pedestal. Like he's some kind of venerated god or something. It makes me sick. Is that it? Are you happy seeing grandfather dead? While everyone was grieving, you were holding yourself back from laughing in everyone's faces? Do you feel just a bit happier seeing him in a live graveyard? Jesus Christ, I felt that, I felt that. Flash of rage crossed his face, and he wrote the back of his hand across my cheek. You don't know anything! Running your mouth like somehow you know everything that went on, when you're just a little girl that doesn't know how to keep her mouth shut! I I'm sorry. You did not know my father. You did not know what he was capable of. Is everything all right? What happened? Nothing. I'm not hungry. I think I'll just go upstairs. Honey, wait! Clearly turned. I ran to my room stairs, slamming the door behind me. My breath came in short pants, and for a while, I just leaned against the door in my bedroom. I was just sliding down it and sit against it. Well, guys, I hope you guys did enjoy this first part of Seduce Me, the Ulta, uh, the Ulta Me. Now, you guys can download this theme. If you want to see more parts of this, just leave a like. I will do more videos on this, and I hope you guys do uh, subscribe, leave a like, and comment. And uh, go check out the game for yourself. And episode two coming out eventually. See you guys later.
Bye now.